So, Marty, I, I, uh, I ask you, um, uh, and, and I'm sure you go into much of this during your book, but I, I was always struck by what you said, and I, 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 thought, I thought it was brilliant <laughs> guidance, sort of a North Star for people working at the Washington Post, that they, every day they were not going to war. They were going to work. Talk about how you balance that with what is clearly, I won't even say what seems to be clearly, what is clearly a threat to the future of American democracy in the form <clears throat> of Donald Trump, a guy who has said that he's going to arrest Democrats after he gets elected, uh, that he, he wants to try the chairman of Joint Chiefs uh, for treason, and that he wants to start yanking media outlets off the air that disagree with him. <clears throat> right. Well, I think uh, obviously there are huge threats to American democracy right now coming out of uh, the Trump campaign and other elements in this country. Uh, and I think that means that we as journalists have to do our jobs and, and tell people what's likely ahead in a second Trump administration. Who are the people he's going to appoint to run the, the major agencies? What are the kinds of policies that he hopes to implement? Uh, we need to do our reporting and show people what a second Trump administration would actually look like. Um, and Marty, you have a piece in The Atlantic entitled, How We Got Democracy Dies in Darkness. <laughs> it's adapted from your book, and you write in part, quote, a month into Trump's presidency, the Post had affixed democracy dies in darkness under its nameplate on the printed newspaper. As the newspaper's owner, Jeff Bezos, envisioned it, this was not a slogan, but a mission statement. The phrase stuck with readers who saw it as perfect for the Trump era, even if that was not its intent. Five months after his inauguration, President Trump invited us to dinner. Trump did almost all the talking. He let loose on a long list of perceived enemies and slights. Atop them all was the press. And atop the press was the post. Trump would be the one to call Bezos' cell phone the next morning, urging him to get the post to be more fair to me. Three days later, the bullying began. At the post, the aim was to get at the facts, no matter the obstacles Trump and his allies put in our way. I believe that responsible journalists should be guided by fundamental principles. We must support and defend democracy. We must be more impressed by what we don't know than by what we know or think we know. So take it a step further, and, and uh, I, I want to know where you think this goes with the Trump presidency and everything we've been talking about, and potential presidency, everything we've been talking about over the past two hours, where it appears Republicans and Trump Republicans, there is nothing that will shock them into thinking, my gosh, this man is trying to kill our democracy. Right. Uh, well, look, there's a, a good segment of the, of the population that won't believe anything that we write. But there are still people among the public who will take a look at the evidence. And I think our job as journalists is to provide that evidence, to do that reporting, to dig deeper, to look behind the curtain and beneath the surface. That's what we have an obligation to do. That is the mission of journalists in this country. That was the idea behind the First Amendment. Uh, as, Matt, as James Madison uh, wrote, to freely examine public characters and measures. The public characters being our politicians, our policymakers of all types, the people who influence policy and the measures to be, uh, meaning the policies that they hope to implement. So that's our job, is to really take a look at that. I think the press plays an incredibly important role right now uh, in uh, revealing to the public what might occur in a, a second Trump administration, also what a second Biden administration would look like. That's our job as well. Uh, so uh, we need to be independent. We need to be objective about how we go this, to do this, but we should be unflinching in what we tell the public about what we've learned. David, I've had some qualms watching some of the coverage um, of, of things like, you know, Trump coming to be arraigned in New York and the ca for, uh, television cameras <laughs> sitting on his plane in LaGuardia for half an hour while baggage mm -hmm. handlers, you know, unloaded the baggage and knowing because I was getting texts from people inside the plane saying, you know, this is total domination of the airways. We're loving this. You know, everyone is on us. Do you think that the press has learned how to cover Trump in a way that would reach those people who are still open to 
you know, hearing the evidence, having the facts laid out before them and making up their own minds, however many of those there are left in the country. But do you think between 2016 and 20, now 2023, uh, a better job is being done or, or not necessarily? Well, I, I think in degree. I think that, you know, we saw a part of the drama at uh, certain other cable network, a lot of criticism and self-criticism. I'm talking about CNN, why, why go around it? That there was a... They enjoyed great ratings from this, of focusing mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, rallies that went on for hours and hours, and it wasn't mediated very well by explanation and context. And I think there was a lot of so, uh, soul-searching, I'm sure, here and, and at, at other networks, or I, I hope there was. And so there's a change in degree. But there's also the dilemma of his popularity. You can't wish it away. And I think Marty, and he makes really clear in his, in his really excellent book, um, that journalists have to do their jobs with incredible concentration uh, and with incredible penetration and integrity and fairness. That's the word I'd use maybe over objectivity, but fairness. And, and, that, and things are going to come out the way they come out. Right. I don't think the Washington Post, the New Yorker, or the New York Times, or any of the like, can uh, be so decisive other than the, in the investigation of fact, uh, the, the discovery of things that we don't know, and putting things in their context and, and commentary. That is already an enormous job. And unfortunately or not, these elections come down to very narrow, uh, you know, and just a small number of states, just a, you know, a few hundred thousand people. That's, that's been our experience in American elections yeah. in recent years. So is the Washington Post, the New Yorker, reaching those decisive few? Somehow, some way, uh, it is possible. Maybe not directly, but through other media, too. Uh, so, so, Marty, just kind of a journalism question I think everybody's grappling with. But, you know, David just mentioned you can't deny his popularity. You can't deny he is right now the front runner and potential nominee. So what, um, what suggestions do you have, guidance, opinions? about interviewing Trump at this point? Well, look, I mean, I think the interviewers have to come really prepared. That hasn't always been the case. I think people have to be there to contradict him when he uh, utters falsehoods, which he does at a, on a regular uh, basis. Uh, but I think uh, beyond that, I'm not sure we need to be giving him this, this, these many platforms actually just for interviews. I think what we really ought to be doing is, in, in, is investigating what it is he intends to do if he were to become president. I think it's more important that we do the reporting rather than just interviewing Donald Trump uh, where he can actually control the con conversation, which he does. So uh, mm -hmm. I wish we would do more of that. I wish we would talk about what a second Trump administration is likely to do. Who is he likely mm -hmm. to appoint? What are the policies he's likely to Im implement? Uh, a lot of the, a second Trump administration clearly would be a vengeance tour. Um, and uh, what would he do to the Justice Department? What would he endeavor to do with the courts? What would he do in a, on a lot of different, uh, in a lot of different arenas? That's what we really ought to yeah. be spending our time on, is digging into that rather than saying, okay, let's interview Donald Trump yet again. I, I